Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and time for another Linux Top 5. And today I want to look at the top five reasons that 2017 is the year to look at the GNU Linux desktop for your computer use. And uh, there's probably a whole lot more than five I could come up with, but a lot of what I'm going to talk about today has to do with choices. And so with that being said, I'm actually going to start out just by pulling up some old videos that I have, um, just so you can kind of get a chance to, to look at uh, what my ideas are. So the first one of the major choices in the Linux, uh, in the Linux, uh, GNU Linux world with desktop computers is that you have the choice in your desktop environment. So that means that no matter what, uh, no matter how you want to organize your your computer or your desktop, if you like a Windows type setup, or if you like a Mac type setup, or if you want something completely uh, different, then uh, you'll get the chance to be able to uh, to see how the um, you know how the desktop would work. So number one reason is your choice in your desktop environment. So I pulled out a few different videos to to look into here. And so the first one here is uh, is the Mate desktop environment. So the Mate desktop environment is is kind of like a a more old traditional type uh, setup where uh, it's very much like the old Windows system. It does uh, have it, it does look a little bit more dated and things. Or it can anyway. You can see I do have some nice effects turned on on this particular version. So it is a very nice desktop environment. It's more like a Windows type system. And in in general, it is a it is a, a very nice setup for uh, any type of good productivity if you're used to like a Windows type environment. Now, uh, there's also um, the KDE environment, which you can set this up pretty much any way you want it. Uh, the KDE is nice uh, for in this case here. I like the Windows type setups, and so that's what I generally build. But here I'm talking about you can have a lot of different widgets on your desktop. You can have a standard taskbar, either the top, the bottom, or any of the sides. You can have a traditional type menu. You can have a menu that's more like a um, more like a, a dash menu. So there's a lot of different a lot of different things you can do with the menu. So here's what this type of menu would look like on this system. And of course, uh, you can set this up to be a variety of of different setups. So here is actually. Uh, the same computer running a Cinnamon environment, which is the one I run on most of my computers, which is set up very much like a Windows type environment because that's what my preference happens to be. Now there's also some more, uh, some, some different ones here. So this one here is the Enlightenment desktop, which utilizes a dock setup. So this has an appearance that's very similar to like a Mac setup. However, there's a lot more that you can do with it. Uh, so they, they do have a menu up there at the top with a lot of the applications. You can also right click anywhere on the desktop for this. So the basic point is, is that there is just so many types of formats that you can use for a Linux desktop. And uh, the last one we're going to look at here, this is, I believe this is Deepin from Manjaro. So it has a application uh, selector here, very similar to what you might find in a Mac. You can see there is a dock down there at the bottom of the screen. And so if you look back at the desktop, you do have a system that's very similar to a, to a Mac type setup. So no matter what type of setup you want for your computer, you have the ability to, to do those setups in, in the way you want. Now, the next thing that you can use to consider whether uh, this is the year of the Linux desktop, of course everyone's saying the year of the Linux desktop. I don't, didn't do the video for that. What I want to talk about is why I think that this is a fabulous system to use. So the next is your, kind of your appearance. So you can have a, if you like the more modern, more flat design, you have that ability under most themes to set up a more modern or flat design. If you happen to like a more skeuomorphic design, you have that option as well. If you want something that looks old school, you have that option as well. So whether you're talking about just how the menus are put together themselves or how the icons look, so you can see here that you can pick from a lot of different icons and these are uh, very applicable for a lot of different Linux distros. So you can grab a lot of different icon packs. So you can see this article here is just looking at some icon packs. 
So there's anything from, from your standard, modern, flat. These guys here are more square icons. Here's more circular icons. Now you have flat, monotonous. A um, lot of different options you have. These ones are much more skeuomorphic 3D design. These are the types of icons I like to use. Uh, just things that bring a lot more color, a lot more design, a lot more style into the operating system. So you have those options as well in your setup. And that is one of those uh, those core reasons to use a Linux system is you can really set it up. And I love the old Windows model where you could really change a lot of things. But a lot of these newer models, these newer computers, the new Windows computers since Windows, about Windows Vista maybe, and the Mac computers, you really don't have any control over how the thing looks. It's like you can choose a light theme or a dark theme, but outside of that, you really don't have any options. Maybe a few color set settings, but that's about it. But with the Linux system, you can really set the desktop up in any way that you like. Now the third is the choice between a, uh, a long-term release or a rolling release. And so I pulled out some actual articles about these um, just to give a brief summary. So the LTS, which stands for the long-term support, means that this is a desktop uh, environment, which you can get this in a server build or in a desktop build, uh, depending on the, the distro that you're running. It means that once it is installed on your system, it's going to be the same operating system, but you're going to get security updates without the feature changes. You're going to get those security updates for a longer period of time, somewhere between two and five years, depending on the desktop uh, that you're running or the, the specific distro that you're running. Kitty wants to come and say hi. Hello, peoples. All right. And so the LTS is great if you have a production system that you have to really be you know, closely tied to or you don't want to mess with any changes, any adjustments to your system. You have the ability to run that. Now, a, a rolling release means that the system is always going to be updating to the latest versions and oftentimes the latest software packages. So while there's good reasons to use an LTS, there's also some good reasons to use a rolling release. So a rolling release article, these will give you a lot of the latest software without having to mess with uh, any of the compiling. So if you do need some of the latest software, uh, you can get it with a rolling release system. Now, a rolling release doesn't always have the latest software. We'll kind of talk about that uh, as our point number four. Um, but it usually will have more up-to-date software than a LTS system will. So you will get another major reason to use an, a, a uh, rolling release distro is that you will get uh, you will get support for newer hardware sooner. You get it like this one back here is running Debian, which is you know classically known for taking forever to release a new system. It does not always have the latest drivers for the latest hardware, so I could not run this on a latest system. But an Arch, which has a lot of rolling release uh, elements to it. I could run Arch on all of the latest hardware because it has that, that hardware implementation faster. Um, with rolling release, you do not get any prompts for version upgrades because you always get the latest version on a, running a basic system update. Um, and then, of course, the downside of that is it, you could get instability issues in your system. So make sure that if you are running a rolling release, understand that there may be times something breaks in your computer and you need to take the time to fix it. But there are advantages and disadvantages to running an LTS or a rolling release. But the great thing with Linux, you got the choice. As of right now, Windows essentially moved to a rolling release model. You don't have a choice in the matter. If everything works on your system and you'd like to just prevent it from updating, you don't have a choice. With Linux, you have the choice. All right. Now, number four, I wanted to talk about the software. You have the ability at any time to use an older version of software or a newer version of software, assuming, of course, you have the know-how. Um, but there are times you might want to use all of the latest software. There might be times that you want your software to um, you want your software to uh, just be um, you know older stuff. If you happen to have a version that works great, for example, I do not like what OpenShot did in the latest versions. I used to use OpenShot to edit my videos. I now use Caden Live. 
Um, but when OpenShot changed their formatting around, I just didn't like it as much. I found it didn't provide any functionality, but it was harder to use. And so with that type of uh, with that type of thing, if I were still using OpenShot, I'd roll back and use an older version because it worked for me. So you have that ability of whether you want all of the latest software or all of that cutting edge. And then finally, more security and more privacy. Uh, on the security end, updates to Linux are released as soon as they're known. And they're known faster in the community and patched faster in the community because it is an open source type platform and people can spot the, the vulnerabilities and patch them. While you may find more known errors or, or known things that need patched in Linux, that's because Microsoft only reports things that become public knowledge. And the same with Apple. So the Linux system, in, in addition to that, you will get the updates for the Linux system, the security updates, particularly for the Linux system, as soon as they are uh, as soon as they are known and available versus Microsoft, you have to wait for a latest, uh, you know, for the next, uh, the patch day. And with Apple, you have to upgrade to the latest OS with all of the feature stuff you may or may not want in order to get any security. And so that is a problem with Linux. You can choose just to update the security package. You can choose which to update, which not to update, and you have a lot more of that. Of course, on privacy front, Linux uh, in general will not be collecting any data about you or, or your system use, but both Apple and Microsoft will do that. And so on the Linux system, you have a whole lot more privacy. You have a whole lot more security because of those. Now, is it true there's going to be some software that may not work as well? Absolutely. Are there going to be some changes to software you may need to use? Absolutely. And am I an advocate of dumping completely Apple or Windows entirely? No, I'm not. Each person needs to use the software and the hardware and the operating systems that they need to use for the jobs that they need to do. I just want people to know that Linux is a valid choice and you can probably do a whole lot more on Linux than you even realize you can. So that is for my Linux Monday Top 5. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.